council is powered off and covered in dust. Eugène Auvert reads a dial key. Allume reads another. The frequency band says, Radio Diffuser. We need to restore power before using this, officer. The generator, it didn't look like there was fuel in it. We should look around outside. There are barrels all over. Maybe one of them still has something in it. The boat's engine. But officer, then we would have to swim back to the mainland. Let's just look around, okay? The consul stands by, mutely. Eugène's Skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Soft covers, Siri. The greasy old spring mattress. Yes, any time. If you need a rest later, it's okay by me. You don't have to be a hero. This old cylindrical generator waits with its. Heavy metal door. There's a rain-soaked mattress on a concrete slab, only half covered by the crumbling roof. At the head of it, double embrasures, firing slits, 
like two eyes in the wall. B triple prime. This looks like a good place to shoot from. A single person mattress. Modern. Civilian use. Brand name. Marjorie. There's a fuel stain on the cover, along with cigarette burns. And an empty can of beans on the ground next to it, filled to the brim with cigarette butts. The silhouette of a tobacco picker adorns the paper filter. The brand, Tio Moteri. I may have been wrong when I said it wasn't important. This means the same person could have visited both locations. I didn't see any signs of smoking inside, though. If people live there, they keep it tidy. This here may also be a smoking spot. There's a firing slit in the wall in front of you, like a little window. Quite old and grimy from years without cleaning by anything other than the rain. The springs screech as you lean on the mattress and crane your neck to look out. Trepidation, a tingling feeling in your stomach. A small piece of Martinez coastline opens up in the square in front of you, like a tiny landscape painting. One kilometre across the water, the ruins look familiar. A towering skyscraper, its top floors shaved off by artillery fire, capeside apartments, Rue de Saint Gislaine, 33A and 33B. The red chimney and collapsed back of the four-story tenement in front of the whirling in rags, Rue de Saint Gislaine, 10, the doomed commercial area. The box-shaped silhouette of the whirling in rags, its sloped roof, a tiny fleck of light catches your eye on the rooftop, sunlight reflecting off the upstairs window of Clasia's room. What does that mean? Do you have line of sight to the window? I can see it, through the scope of a rifle. The shooter would be prone, lying on the mattress, barrel resting on the embrasure. Cheek against the cheek rest, hand on the hair trigger, on a calm day like this. Good. I think we have it, detective. The origin of the shot. This is the sniper's nest. Affirmative. In our defense, nothing pointed here. Many, many leads pointed elsewhere. Don't beat yourself up, officer. We did not put guns in their hands or get them drunk. The lieutenant pauses. Regret comes over him. We will make up for it. Here. I feel it. Where? He does not answer. Just nods. With his back hunched, he looks around once more and says, He feels uncomfortable suddenly. We should move now. This old cylindrical generator waits with its fuel cap open. Makeshift electrical wiring runs out of its side and across the floor. The lieutenant assists you, holding the canister up to the fuel tank as you tilt. Dark brown, viscous fluid pours out and the room fills with a chemical smell. There's a red starter switch on the side of the cylinder and a start rope on the other side. The lieutenant flicks the switch. The recoil start wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old war horse before settling down to a rattle. That should do it. Dim 
golden glow animates the console. Faint, like a ghost light. Eugène's over reads one dial key. Allumé reads another. It's on. Turn emergency open. Automatic boot. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. A shaft of light appears, then widens as the light shines in. A sudden wave of anxiety makes your skin crawl. After you. So did I. Not back there, but I felt it since we came here. I don't know. A thin wisp of smoke rises from a charred black fire pit. The wind picks up, then dies down again. Don't be. I have a gun. I know. It was not easy to acquire. Suit trousers leans on the frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth, then spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids, to meet yours. Unclouded by cataracts, his eyesight is sharp. He's practically tearing up from spite. Hatred got the best of him a long time ago. This man hates everything. The what now? I can't hear you. I may have. All sorts of little rats have come sniffing around, trying to give up the position. The position? Sounds like a hiding place. Fire guy. Regressive bourgeoisie henchman. Can't even talk like a grown-up. My eyesight? <clears throat> yes. Helps me see all the shit. A shudder of disgust passes his right side. His left side remains motionless. I did. And you... I should have burned that console down. Reactionary rock and roll music. Playing on the water. Told you we shouldn't play sad FM. I did. We have entered a world where he said you shouldn't. It is the only world. Sad FM, huh? I always hated that station. Phlegmatic counter-revolutionary dirges. Sadness is a mental illness, a weapon of the bourgeoisie. The fascists were right about rock and roll. It is degenerate, hip gyrating mental illness music. It's not nice. It's a piece of shit. But it gets the job done. It's a triangong. 446. Southeast Samarin made. Exotic. Must be defunct too. No modern rifle manufacturer of that name springs to mind. A Samarin rifle? How did you get hold of one? It was sent to us by our brothers in the Sinyao commune. Military aid. If that stayed true to him, he can still make it sing. You heard me. 
It's good now, like chalk white from the board. He's right. Almost no one remembers there was a third metastasis of the world revolution in the Safray Empire, extinguished in 06. They wouldn't like hearing their name in your mouth. Damn dog. The time will come to win his trust, comrade. It is not now. You need to take care of the gun first. The lieutenant pulls his pistol from the holster. You are a glorified night watchman. This is a service rifle. I can only lay it down before an enemy commander of corresponding rank. His elbows rest on the frame stock, calmly for now, but he may still get it in his hands. Looks like he knows the weapon. You don't see a magazine in the well. You're right. It's a good thing I got one in the chamber. Oh, wait. Yes. The words, I am an enemy commander, sound cold as iron from your lungs. The old man still hugs his gun. And what rank would that be, dog? A big wheel of the 4th Regiment of the Pederast Army. <sighs> to hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. It's out of bullets. like an amputated limb in the sand. He stares on, his wrinkled mouth moving without a sound. A strange sadness, like a song. The future teaches you to be alone. The present. The present to be afraid and cold. Real music. Real brilliant cult. That's La Revachelier, not your rock and roll misanthropy. Chanson de Soldat of the Black and Whites. Marching song. Forget about that for a moment. You need to address that remark first. The job of a shit licker. There you go. One of three. In Grad, they sang Brave Children, favorites of history. And in Sin Yao, it was. some Samaran shit, I guess. Everyone has. They named a fucking perfume after it. Talk to her? God, shithouse. <laughs> Should have taken it down like they did in Grad. Dismantled it for firewood. All around you, the air slowly circulates the islet carrying little swallows and black-beaked seagulls in its slow drift. They all, every one of them, every bird, mammal, and crustacean, keep their distance. How did it go? Something about shooting rabbits. I don't know. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. It's gone now. He waves erratically with his hand, annoyed that he can't remember. A little tremor passes through him. It was dear to him. He resents forgetting it. 
His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Frame stopped and patched in places with tape and wire. Still warm from his parched hands. Not the metal. The metal is ice cold. This weapon has been modified several times. The rifle's in a shabby state, like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm made of walnut. On the butt, you see Vespertine writing, burnt into the wood. Triangon, 4.46 mm, made in Xinyao. No one said it has to be a Belmar grave. We were just guessing. From ballistics, it could easily have been a triangle, too. It doesn't matter if it was made in Shanti Shanti. All it has to do is use jacketed ammunition. And it does. The right type and the right calibre. He's liking this. I wonder how old it is. The old man does not answer. He just stares in front of him. The old man keeps following your motion with his gaze. His right arm twitches suddenly. Some kind of involuntary response? Something is slightly off with his motorex. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It could be used against him to get a confession. In time. My name is Josef. Lilianovich Dross, political commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my termless surrender. The Commune of Revachol? Do you mean the ICM? Your uh, holdover from the... From the Insul Indian Citizens Militia. The Army of the Revolution. I was recruited in Jamrock in 07. Trained in the Ecole de Control Orion. And consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here, on May 14th, the Commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained, I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 51 minus 8 equals 43. No. I've been on other islands too. I was an Resurrection until they turned it into a spa in 18. Then I was an E-48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. That was 22 years ago. I was just 16 years old, 15 when I volunteered. I had a lapse of faith. <clears throat> and of courage, too. You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat and thought Mazovian socioeconomics were fallible. For a second, I doubted the irreducible laws of historic materialism. A second is all it took for reaction to take hold. Petty bourgeois terror. It's in all men. It's the same thing. You haven't seen it. Not really. Not naked. It's impossible not to be afraid. It remains unclear what it is. He makes leaps he doesn't expect you to follow. And this was when? He is still not convinced of his safety. You should not be either. May the 13th, 08, 44 years ago. 
The horizon was black with coalition airships. Their petroleum rose to the sky and it looked like... like it formed the clouds. Storm clouds. When they started shelling, it was dark magic. The combined might of international capital. All at once, all the greed and terror in the world tore into Revachol. It lifted streets from the ground and turned houses into ghosts. We were in the flak tower. Huddled on the floor, the artillery was 80 kilometers away in Ozon, but I knew. I knew the commune would fall. We would all be turned into ash. So I said I was going to the map room. A terrible shame, still within him. The lobes of his ears are red with it. The shame and smallness of what he became. Now, I climbed the chain link across the water and hid inland, in the bunkers there, like the weakest of the weak. A mouse, frightened of the ordinance all night, and the sound of the rotors in the morning, whirring. <laughs> Airships. I climbed out into hell. The landing was complete. The chain was submerged. I had to swim back. The fortress was half submerged too. Shattered. They'd all drowned in the lower levels or got torn to shreds above. The anti-aircraft gun had malfunctioned. So had I. I left them without ideological direction. It was real. I'd seen it. I'd seen it in reality. Some kind of great terror. Worse than you've ever seen. The mask of humanity fall from capital. It has to take it off to kill everyone. Everything you love. All the hope and tenderness in the world. It has to take it off just for one second to do the deed. And then you see it as it strangles and beats your friends to death. The sweetest, most courageous people in the world. You see the fear and power in its eyes. Then you know that the bourgeois are not human. I had to. I had to fight it. I had to never stop. It's not an island, what? It's a defensive fortification of the commune of Revachol. And I am its last surviving defender. The congenitally deformed King Philip II built it to restrict access to the Bay of Revachol. We captured it in 02, retrofitted the fort with an AA gun to defend against an airborne landing against the whole world. Coalition military called it Operation Deathblow. I later found out on the radio they called it Deathblow. You are one of them. Tell me, who speaks like that? We had 50 million people on Caillou alone. Sure you are. You're our CM. Answer me. Who calls an operation against 50 million people? Death blow. Iblis. The Black-Eyed Angel. Shaitan Ahora, the Darkened One. How does anyone survive? I steal. Now hold on there. You're insane and grotesque. Everyone steals. 
vegetables, supplies. It's the life of a dog. <coughs> How is your health, Mr. Dross? I've been throwing up blood since winter. Red, like beetroot. Been passing it in stool, too. He does seem frail. Good for his age. More like 75 than 65. Trouble putting on weight could mean cancer. The RCM can provide medical services. You need to be looked over. I need to die. You don't have medical facilities. You have guns. That's all they give you. Toy guns. I have been running out of that stuff. There's no way he could manage the pain without them. It's safe to say he is addicted to painkillers by now. It's the little joys. A dark joke. A sunshiny day. Morphine. There's nothing to look over. The triage is in, and it's black. Administer morphine. Morrible. I haven't. I have holes in my brain. Years missing. Others filled with pain only. A decade of... I don't even know what. Inferno? I would imagine it gets tremendously difficult, mentally, to live in isolation. Traitors. It's better alone. I watch the people of this city turn the lights back on. More and more each year. Ruins. Glimmering in the dark. Like a fucking merry-go-round. It's disgusting. Are they not heartbroken? How could they have moved on? It was hard in the tens. I didn't have partisan training. They were searching for stragglers, those bloodhounds. Floodlights on the water at night. There were posters, campaigns. We communards still hoped, and they needed to snuff that hope out. The East capitulated. Martinez and Cold City were turned to dust. But Jamrock, Forberg, even Coron, and Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Marsoff coursing through their veins. And others, too. Some cordons of Revachol were still fighting. There were cells. I tried to contact them. Soon they all went silent. The frequencies dead. At night, I used a dinghy. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols, you lot, the commons too. They'd started snitching. In the city, you move underground? From bunker to bunker. Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... I don't want to. They're all traitors. Pigs, rabbits, and dogs. Men without ideals are only animals. He does not want to see life moving on. People forget him. Drinking. Laughing. So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Elmer Graves, right? Useless now. Rusted away. So you've been there? Sleeping. <laughs> Some nights. Ammo scrounging on others. Those McGraves were shit, even before they corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. You feel the dots connecting. Little dots on the map he's walked across. 
the propaganda bunker. <laughs> I used to, but not anymore. Propaganda bunker? They stored leaflets there. Broadcasting equipment, too. Made broadcasts, I think. Propaganda officers. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins on the ground. I do. <coughs> They're good. Plenty of tar. I like that boy on the pack, too. Reminds me of the last century. The old man looks across the water at the city, the ruins, the motorways rising above it. You're with the RCM. The coalition appointed mob that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachol. A so-called Lieutenant W. Freighter. You're the RCM. You represent the Moralist International. The enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary. Le Parti Communiste dans ce land. Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. <coughs> A spray of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal in the fire pit. Rene, the royalist on the coast, said. Liberal reactionaries signed that instrument. Traitors who should have been burned alive. I answer to the Communist Party. Is that part of why you've been here all this time? Because the party didn't surrender? He just wipes the blood from his chin. I don't think you did. You live in a delusion. Radio shows, speed racing and sporting goods. It's not real. No, I am not a soldier. I am an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not to the army. Trained in historical materialism, then assigned as a political commissar by the party. These things used to mean something. The old man does not answer. He tilts his silver head and looks at the reeds. You see a small tremor pass through his legs. His job was to assure the army answers to civilian control and follow the ideology of the commune. Scientific communism. A commissaire politique is a night philosopher of the revolution, a future human. Awakened from shutdown by the promise of ideology. He nods slowly, then another tremor. Three years and ten months. It's too long. It's not how a human being should live. <clears throat> but I couldn't just forget what I saw. What have you been doing during all this time? Hiding, fishing, waiting. Where the afternoon grows late, on Rue de Saint-Gislaine, people walk home. Street lights will soon be lit. Further inland, the streets are alive with workers, men, women, children, street hawks and migrant laborers. The temperature is steady. 
Alto cumulus clouds form above Precinct 41. Always waiting. For her to return. Her who? Girl child revolution. Always. The material base for an uprising has eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind and themselves. The historic opportunity for our revolution has passed. It will not come back anymore, however hard I try, whatever I do. There's nothing serious in this world. It's a farce. For a 60-year-old man with stomach trouble, who spent his entire life alone on an uninhabited island, he seems surprisingly fit. He's clearly a drug user of the painkiller sort, prone to erratic hand gestures and malnourished. But that's it. The moment passes and you say, I've used it for killing people. Here we go. A trail of blood. The lieutenant smells it too. Killing people? It's a gun. That's what they're for. You want a moralist euphemism? Defending your family and your property. I haven't done that. I've used it to kill people. Interesting. During or after the war? There is no after the war. Class war is never over. So is continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay, okay. This is it. You can feel it, like battery acid on the tip of your tongue. Something you haven't felt in a while, but... This is what you live for. This is the shit. The great serotonin jackpot. The solution. Go in straight. No euphemisms. He doesn't like those. No, no. Be careful now. Slow and steady does it. Make him repeat it first. Don't mess this up. Remember, he wants to tell you. It personal. I don't want to tell you anything, you grotesque murderer. And why did you think that was a good idea? Don't listen to me. I'm wrong all the time. What did I just say? What did I just tell you? Don't drop the ball now. The who now? He heard you. He just wants to hear you say it again. This is dramatic flair on his part. Right choice. We're in. Do it, sire. Yes, that one. Ugly. Did you kill him? I am a son of a welder and an officer of the commune of Revachol. I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. Exhaust him with proof. Pile it all on him. Get a confession. The gun. The murder weapon is the perfect opener. The scent of blood in the air. But what else? There was something you can't remember. Something about the tracks. Suddenly, all those tracks are so confusing. 
Go with something else first. I saw you poking around there, looking for evidence. You're damn diligent when it comes to dead fascies. Did you like the view? You had direct visibility. There are embrasures in the concrete, specifically meant for a top follower to use. And you had a long-range rifle in your possession. You've been here a long time, Mr. Dras. Too long. You clearly need medical aid. I'm ready to die. <coughs> I've done my part. He's practically admitted to it. Dead fascists, for fascists, done his part. Just one thing remains unclear. The rifle does not seem to have a scope. Forget about your stupid fucking scope. I don't know where it is. Find it yourself. It's your problem now. He lost it. He just doesn't know where it is. Forget it. Push on. You're sad for your fascia brother, aren't you? One twig got broken. Now the others are sad. Almost. He almost burst out there. Keep piling arguments. Anything. <laughs> Not a lot of guns around that use military-grade ammunition, are there? It's a real gun, not like your little musketeer pistols. I've seen you prance around with those, jumping hoops for the liberals. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons? <laughs> Going against automatic rifles with these toy guns. Of course you got those boys killed. Damn, he saw you. He's watched it happen. He would have a good view of the tribunal from here. It's not just empty boasting. So he saw you. Okay. So what? Don't let it divert you. You know what? You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? 4.46 jacketed ammunition, modified for range. We have it. This is it. Good. This feels good, doesn't it? Tearing things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. Murder. This pushed him, but not enough. Just a little more. You're lost, Dwat. You're lost. Aside from the rare, erratic hand gesture, smacking his lips and despondently staring into the fire, you can only see that he is old. Real much. Forget about that for a moment. You don't understand anything. What strikes you about this gaunt man is not the stomach pain, or the cough, or the malnutrition. It's precisely what you could not see before. For a man who spent 44 years hidden in the urban wild. Indeed, he speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. Above all, he seems animated. It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost too. Erratic hand gestures, thought processes cut off like threads as he just stares at the logs or the reeds. He also suffers mood swings bubbling to the surface, unconstrained by his nervous system. You've seen demented people before. This feels similar, 
yet different. When his thoughts move, they are lucid, keen even, not senile. No, I'm not okay. I shit blood and I'm surrounded by insane people. There it is again, erratic hand motions, bouts of rage, and the stomach thing too, of course. Is what you plan to say before you can get past your under. The lieutenant interrupts you. Officer, are we sure? We could maybe get more. The old man looks at his rifle in your hands, a little startled for some reason. You startled him. Maybe it was a silence. He quickly gathers himself. Still, what could he be afraid of? I ain't going anywhere. 